Hey, welcome back everyone to your video over SQL Server. I'm Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, and we are going to be covering domain constraints. This video is going to be pretty simple and to the point. That's because a lot of this information we've covered in the other videos coming up to this point. I'm just going to leave all this information here though, in case you need to come back and look up what a domain constraint is, or you just forget and you need a review. So before we talk about what domain constraints are, we need to talk about what domain is. The domain of something is the appropriate or accepted values. How do we know what's acceptable? This comes from what's known as the business rules. Now there's a fine line between business rules and domain, so don't take it all too seriously and try to divide one, you know, just learn them both. <laughs> but essentially, business rules are the English or spoken language equivalent of domain. So your boss might be like, hey loser, do this or you're gonna get fired. And then you take his commands and convert that into domain. <laughs> so he might say, yo punk, we need to restrict this data from here to here, nothing higher, nothing lower. And your response is to convert that into domain using SQL. Now SQL Server is awesome when it comes to domain constraints. That's because we can get very specific on what data is allowed, and it's very easy to do. We'll talk about how we can do that in just a moment. But first, let's talk about some of the more general ways we can restrict data. Obviously, we can use data types. What that does is force the data to be inputted in the database to be of a certain format. That means if it's a numeric column, it's going to reject string data. We will cover the data types in an upcoming video, but just understand what they are for now. The other way is using constraints. So we could say the unique constraint and the not null constraint. Unique is going to force every single value for a column to be unique. Not null is going to say every single row has to have a value for that column. So we can use these to be a little bit more strict on what's allowed. So let's say a value has already been entered of 17, for example, and that column's labeled unique and you try to put 17 in again, it's not going to let you do that. Or if you don't put a value in at all and it's labeled as not null, it's not going to let you do that either. These are the general ways how to restrict data. But SQL Server has something known as a check constraint. Now a check constraint allows us to be very specific on the data that is allowed. So this allows us to do things like between. And then you can satisfy your boss by restricting the data to be between two certain numbers. That's really super cool. One of the other common database management systems, MySQL, does not have check constraints. So you gotta go an extra step and add database triggers or find some kind of workaround to make this work. So all of this is a way to protect our domain integrity. I, I wrote constraints up here, but more generally, this should be integrity. And then these are example of constraints we can use to force domain integrity. Making sure we have the right data type and the right constraints, as well as all of the specific check constraints, is really all we're going to need to make sure our domain integrity is being A-OK. -okay. <laughs> that really sums up everything I gotta say in this video. If anything is confusing, I'm probably gonna have videos over each one of these things. <laughs> so you can go check all those out. So hopefully that was helpful. As always, be sure to subscribe, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click like. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video.